now joined by Dr. Fontem uh, Niba, who's a scholar, author, and uh, founding Secretary General of the Cameroon Anglophone Civil Society uh, Consortium. Uh, Dr. Niba, thank you very much indeed for joining us, and welcome to the program. Thank you. How important is this uh, concession that's been made by the United States government? Uh, I would like to first of all say that um, the TPS, the Temporary Protective uh, uh, Status, is an acknowledgement that the war going on in the Southern Cameroons is, uh, is real. One thing that the government of Cameroon has tried to do is to deceive the international community that it was a local problem that could easily be fixed. And for the past five years, they have been rigmaroling and you know, getting confused about how to end the war. They have spent so much money, the economy has bled, and they still cannot dampen or douse, completely douse the nationalistic feelings of the people of Southern Cameroons. So with the coming of this uh, 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 decision by the U.S. government to grant TPS to the people of Southern Cameroons, uh, to, to, to Cameroonians, I think um, uh, we believe that we are on the right course to getting the international community to come into this matter and help us resolve it. Asylum suggests that a person is in danger in their home country should they return. Is that what people in southern Cameroons face if they do go back to uh, Cameroon? In fact, they face, they face all kinds of dangers. There are people who have gone to Cameroon to, uh, for visits and they have disappeared. Uh, right now, the Cameroon government has uh, military units that are specialized in abducting, uh, that are specialized in, in, in killing, and uh, it, is, it has generally created a humanitarian situation whereby uh, uh, several hundreds of thousands of people have fled into neighboring Nigeria. There are many more thousands in forests in, in, in the southern Cameroons, and uh, other people have migrated to other countries like Equatorial Guinea and Gabon. So you, 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 the, the, the government believes that by bludgeoning the people, they can stamp out this quest for freedom. But I wonder how far they're going to go. Many people sometimes simplify this as an Anglophone, Francophone uh, conflict. But it is more about an independence of a nation of people, isn't it? It is about two countries which came together in a union as equals. And eventually one found itself uh, assimilated by the other. In 1961, the people of Southern Cameroon joined La Republique du Cameroon in a two-state uh, two federation where uh, uh, they were supposed to share power equally. Uh, the people of Southern Cameroon were a self-governing people. But by 1972, using force, ruse, and uh, the help of some countries, some uh, Western countries, uh, the people of Southern Cameroons were uh, assimilated into a unitary state. And that marked the, 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 the beginning of, of our wars. Over the years, um, uh, uh, Southern, Southern Cameroonians were forced to speak French, to study in French, and uh, things came to a head over in 2016, uh, in 2016 and 2017, when uh, the government refused to listen to uh, 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 grievances that had to that dealt specifically with the, the the existence or the cultural existence of the people of Southern Cameroons. At that point, uh, the, 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 the the society began to implode, and it has become a conflict, an armed conflict with the people seeking downright independence. And it should be recorded that when this conflict started in 2016, 2017, the people were actually asking for a return to the 1961 uh, federal arrangement which they had with La Republique du Cameroon. But Cameroonese are a very violent people. 
They are a very aggressive people. And uh, with the backing of France, they were able to start a war which now has become like a bone in their throat. Are southern Cameroonians in, in danger from other uh, Cameroonians? And I'm just going to use the word French speaking uh, for ease of reference. Or is it just the authorities? Well, it is, uh, it is a general danger because um, the, 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 the Cameroonese, and I want to make this distinction between Cameroonese and Southern Cameroonians. Right. Uh, the Cameroon French speaking and the Cameroonians are English speaking. Uh, the, Camerone the Cameroonese have been trained and brought up to see Anglophones as second class citizens. They have been brought up to see them as slaves. Southern Cameroons, the territory uh, called Southern Cameroons provides more than 60% of the GDP of the, the entire country. But uh, Southern Cameroons uh, uh, has no roads, their, 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 their water facilities, energy system, uh, it, it does not work. And over the years, even the economic structures that we brought into the union with La Republique du Cameroon were depleted, destroyed, you know, vandalized. Money was embezzled. Companies were 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 were, uh, uh, were sold, and so our people have lived in misery. They have languished in that relationship. Now, francophones, as they would like to be called, or Cameroonese, as we call them, uh, believe that we are the slaves in the relationship. And so uh, you see how in Yaoundé, ordinary citizens are turning on, on, on ordinary uh, uh, Southern Cameroonians who have escaped the war uh, uh, on the grounds that they are agents of uh, uh, the liberation struggle. And so they have been going around arresting Southern Cameroonians in Yaoundé, burning their homes, burning their businesses, simply because they come from that part of uh, 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 the country. So we believe that the only way the world can get a fair and just settlement is by bringing the two parties to the table and arranging to have a peaceful separation between the two. And once that is done, we believe that we can continue to live as good neighbors, as uh, uh, live as uh, uh, live as good neighbors, the way we were before 1961. I would imagine, though, it would be very difficult uh, for Yaounde to let go of uh, Southern Cameroons, given, as you say, 60% of the country's GDP is from that region alone. Yes, and that is the reason why they are ready. To, they are ready to kill all Southern Cameroonians. In fact, it is important to note also that there is a plan to uh, decimate uh, the, the, the territory. They are forcing our people to move out. It is a modus operandi. If you see what happened during the, 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 the French Cameroon Civil War uh, uh, between 1950, the war that was fought against the Union de Population du Cameroon. All villages were burnt down, the people moved out, and, uh, and non-indigenous were brought in. And so you find today in certain communities, uh, uh, in certain uh, uh, communities, entire villages that are, made, that are metropolitan, that are made up of non-indigenous, because the indigenous fled at some point, and non-indigenous had to come in and, and populate the place, and the government does it del deliberately. That is what they are doing in Southern Cameroons. They have burnt down more than 300 villages. You travel along uh, the territory of Southern Cameroons, you will notice that they are uh, uh, they either very old people that are left, most of the young people have run away. They are killing all the young men, uh, uh, killing children. So it, there is general panic, there is general, general pandemonium. The people are fleeing and the government is, th that is their script. But what we know is that uh, it may take some time, but the people of Southern Cameroons are going to have their freedom because uh, even 
the, 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 the French speaking people who from the very outset denied the existence of any uh, uh, Anglophone problem and refused to use the word Southern Cameroons or Ambazonia, now use those words on their television uh, uh, programs. So it, is, it starts with denial, then you begin to acknowledge that there is a problem. From the very beginning, the government itself said there was no Anglophone problem. And today, they are forced to accept that there is a Southern Cameroon's problem, that there is an Ambazonian problem. They will eventually come to terms with reality. All right. When you use the words decimate, uh, wiping out uh, people deliberately, um, words like genocide come to mind. And is this something that's being sanctioned by President Bia himself? Yes. Uh, I think the decision to, the, the decision for, uh, 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 for those, the mass killings, the pogroms, uh, the genocide comes from uh, the presidency because they believe that by killing the people en masse, will uh, intimidate and frighten the rest of the population. But unfortunately, that has not worked. You would, you, if you see the, 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 some of the footage, uh, they, they, they gather young men as if to interrogate them in their 30s, in their 40s, and at times 50 of them, they, sh they, 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 they kill them and, and, and set, the, bo and, and set the, bosses, the, the bodies on fire. That it tells you, it tells you the extent, the, 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 the extent of satanism that is in that system. And the people of Southern Cameroons were never used to such violence. On, or, although it was predicted by our forebears that this relationship we are going into is going to be a very violent one. We are dealing with people who have no respect for life. But we don't know what happened. Now our people have realized themselves and they are determined to break away. And mentally, the people of Southern Cameroon have already broken away. We may have a little problem with uh, our comprador bourgeoisie. The comprador bourgeoisie is the Southern Cameroon's elite. The Southern Cameroon's elite who are either ministers, directors in the central administration and who have the privilege of enjoying those, uh, 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 the, 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 the resources that are taken from our territory without accountability, and who create the impression that the people of Southern Cameroon do not have any complaint, that they do not have any problem. But I can assure you that from the look of things, these people are in, they're just an infinitesimal segment of, the, of, of our population, and with the determination that you can see, they will eventually fizzle out. All right, I want to end uh, where we started, and this is the concession that the United States has given. Uh, but it seems that there is a time limit to this, that 18 months from now, this concession disappears. What are they hoping will happen in 18 months? Do you think that you'll be at a point of resolution, that it'll be safe for Southern Cameroonians to go back home in 18 months? <laughs> Well, I think that the 18 months, it's also uh, a challenge to those of us who are into humanitarian activities, who are into advocacy, uh, who uh, are doing some of the diplomatic work, talking to people in the international community and the United States government. Uh, to, it is a challenge that we must live up to and work hard enough so that by the end of the 18 months, uh, the international community would have come together to proffer a long lasting solution or a sustainable solution to the conflict that is going on in Southern Cameroons. Already um, the Swiss have come in and they are using Canadian funding, but we have made it repeatedly, or we have said it repeatedly and abundantly clear that uh, we will be we will prefer an a, a mediation that is multilateral we do not want one country to be the sole mediator in this conflict and so the swiss cannot 
unilaterally mediate in this conflict. We want other countries, and uh, we believe that the, 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 in the, the, it, is, it is four years running. The Swiss do not want to listen, but at some point, uh, the people of Southern Cameroon will have to take a decision because it is our people who are dying. It is our, uh, uh, econo uh, our economy that is uh, being destroyed and you know our people are suffering. So we believe that at some point the world will understand why we don't want the Swiss to come in because there is no conflict of this nature that a, a, a single country should handle. We expect that some African countries should take part. We also expect that uh, the, 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 the international regional blocs should also be part, party to, to, the, to the mediation process. Dr. Neva, that's where we'll leave it. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, always good to have you on our programs. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. All right, so that's uh, uh, political and minority rights activist uh, Dr. Uh, Niebuhr speaking to us about uh, the concession that the United States government is affording to uh, Cameroon asylum seekers that uh, they're allowed to stay in America for at least another 18 months with work permits given uh, their safety back at home, particularly those from the southern Cameroons that speak English, that feel persecuted by Cameroonians who uh, are identified as French-speaking.